Welcome, another interview from the Things Conference. Who are you and uh, uh, what do you do? Good morning, my name is Fabio Violante. I'm the CEO of uh, Arduino. That's great, and, and you brought something with you. Uh, yeah, you know, we are a member of the, the Lore Alliance and uh, we recently launched a product uh, that is basically a product called uh, uh, MKR1 uh, that is uh, a, a node uh, that uh, leverages the LoRa technology for uh, people that want to uh, start exploring uh, the, the LoRa world uh, with the simplicity of Arduino that has been, you know, one of our key success factor in the past uh, the past year and of course Arduino has evolved quite a bit and uh, of course uh, LoRa is an important part of the technology technological evolution uh, and uh, this board that we that we recently launched um, has the characteristic of uh, being low power so it can be used in application that you can distribute on the field and uh, allows to explo exploit the power of the power of, of the LoRa network mm. so is this the first uh, um, LoRa application within the Arduino family that you uh, explored this is the first uh, the first uh, LoRa application uh, we embraced the entire spectrum of technology of course for low, low power long range uh, but uh, we have a lot of expectation for this product. Uh, that the initial reception from the market has been amazing, and uh, and we hope that uh, this would become sort of the the de facto standard for entering the LoRa the LoRa space. Right. And was was there a specific demand from the market or uh, from your uh, because uh, you got a huge uh, group of fans and uh, and a huge community? Was there was there people tinkering already with LoRa that said? Come on, make me something with LoRa, or yeah, exactly, because they want something that is simple to program, and uh, and uh, and our community in our forum, we noticed that uh, uh, there were people asking for for this kind of products, and it made perfectly sense for us to first become members of the LoRa Alliance, and second, develop a product that can suit the needs of uh, of of people that were asking for this type of technology. Right. So, so with a certain. Uh, uh, Areas or industries or or, uh, or hobbyists or whatever that uh, uh, that are most interested in the, in the LoRa uh, functionality within Arduino. Yeah, I think in terms of industry, you know, Arduino is so popular that we have almost all the industries covered. Mm -hmm. That we have mm, basically at least three major categories of people that are using Arduino. On one side, you have the typical maker world or mm -hmm. individuals that are approaching technology, combining software and hardware for the first time, that basically do uh, like to do, you know, home automation application or garden automation application. So this is the perfect technology for, uh, for this kind of application. Then we have the educators uh, that are moving from, you know, when, when, when they go up in their classes, they start teaching not only how to use or program a single device, but they want to create network device that do, that do stuff in their classes so we have a lot of teachers that uh, are interested in connected devices from us they started with Wi-Fi but then they are exploring also application outside they want battery power devices so this is again a perfect match for the kind of audience uh, primary and secondary schools and universities especially universities and then of course we, there is the third category of people that are professional people uh, that uh, already used Arduino quite a bit for prototyping their uh, their devices, but the ambition when we created this new form factor that we we we, we use in this board that is called MKR form factor, more compact. Uh, the idea that we had in mind is also to support uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, to embed these pre-certified devices into their own design so that they can basically solder this board as is and have a pre-certified uh, uh, component of their, their final design. And this is, you know, the challenge that we are trying to, 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 to exploit with, uh, with, uh, with this kind of form, form factor. So helping people that have to produce, I don't know, 5,000, 10,000 devices, they don't have to go and recertify the entire thing, build everything, but they have a microcontroller, power management, and also connectivity in the same place, and also a security layer that we provide with crypto chips. So uh, this allow, you know, uh, quicker time to market. And you know, on top of this, um, one of the evolution of the, of the new strategy that we developed for Arduino uh, is also uh, you know, based on, 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 um, on the cloud. 
So we launched about one year and a half ago a um, sub website called create.arduino.cc uh, that is um, our you know uh, id started as our id that is the development environment for arduino that traditionally was a bulk file that you download and still we keep maintain and evolve that product but we also have an editor in the cloud uh, that makes even easier for people to uh, start working with the, with arduino so those Basically, this is a, I would think this is the perfect complement, and of course we are adding more and more capability to this cloud in order for have also uh, networked services based on the different protocols that we that we support, including LoRa. So talk talk about LoRa. Uh, um, it took you some time to uh, to develop specific hardware uh, for LoRa, uh, so you must have well looked at the industry and at the technology for a long time. Um, uh, where is LoRa at this moment, in, in, from your point of view? You know, LoRa is, uh, I think, is starting right now. Uh, to be, to be, to be very honest, uh, because you know, on the on the nodes, the prices started to reach a point where you can create affordable devices in the range of thirty euros. This is some thirty something euros, and you can buy it from our uh, store uh, online or through our distribution. As far as the gateway part. Uh, they are a little expensive right now. Initiatives like the Thing Networks are very important, I think, in the the journey of LoRa because this will create, you know, the basis for, uh, you know, uh, mass adoption of this technology uh, without having to cope with service providers and, and other stuff. So, uh, I think that uh, at the moment. The, the gateway part uh, becomes more affordable, then there will be a much faster uh, adoption. So we are looking also uh, to, 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 to this space uh, because it's very in sync with our community. Uh, people that want to do their, their own stuff, they have the freedom to choose if they want to, to go for a one solution or if they want to do just their automation in their garden, but also a lot of companies are looking at, uh, you know, self-contained solutions. So I think that we're just scratching the surface and potential is very, it's very huge. And uh, what we are trying to do uh, is to have a specific focus on, uh, on LoRa as a company so that uh, we can complement these kind of devices with smaller devices and bigger devices to support different use cases. Hmm. Did you say that you're going to develop your own gateway as well? We are now discussing uh, right now the, our own strategy as far as the gateway is uh, is concerned. Uh, what we would like to do is to provide a development kit based on Arduino, and this is something that we are developing. Uh, for sure, on the node side, right now is going to be totally Arduino te technology, and uh, and we are looking into that space to define our own our own strategy. As for, for applications, uh, uh, what kind of typical applications have you, I mean, it's just been launched, but do you already see typical applications uh, that are using your new device or uh, or maybe in the Basically, testing phase? Basically, what, what we are uh, seeing in general for all the long range, low power, are mainly um, outdoor sensors, uh, environmental sensors, temperature, humidity. Um, we are working with several startups uh, in Europe mainly for uh, smart agriculture application and precision agriculture. Uh, this is the perfect fit for that kind of uh, uh, application. Also application in uh, the water management space we see we see a lot uh, for, for monitoring we, we see a lot of uh, uh, projects. We have a, a website that is part of the create environment of cloud environment called uh, Project Hub that is a collector of projects based on Arduino. And, uh, and if you type LoRa in that on project tab, you will start seeing a lot of uh, this kind of application that I mentioned before. So outdoor application, agriculture application, uh, water application, air quality, this kind of application seem to be predominant. And what I hear from uh, mainly the company uh, side, so the more the enterprise, the small medium enterprise, there is some interest uh, into wearable devices uh, based on uh, on, uh, on LoRa uh, for uh, you know for safety reasons. They want to to, to provide workers with uh, with devices that they can wear, and the, the sensor can uh, uh, easily 
uh, you know, provide information on the quality of the environment around surrounding the, 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 the worker or um, application based on accelerometer that detect if, uh, if something happened to the to the worker and you know with the, with LoRa you can cover wide areas so for example for uh, again outdoor application in uh, on the um, you know the mountains or something like that LoRa is a perfect match sure. and uh, um, if you're talking about the further development of, of LoRa what, what is the biggest challenge that you see uh, the biggest uh, hurdle that LoRa needs to take in the next uh, couple of years I think one of the the challenges that I keep hearing from customers, I'm a person that comes from, you know, I come from the IT world, less from the hardware world, but I love to talk to customers. So what I hear, one of the needs that is important that I hear is a specific need by this, for example, the ability to do over the air update uh, of those devices, because you have the flexibility of having a microcontroller, a computer, <laughs> let's say a small computer, very secure, but you need to, to keep it fresh in terms of uh, what capability you are adding to your device. So, for example, this is an area that I know that uh, the Alliance is, uh, is considering right now. So having a standard for the over-the-air update of those devices, it's, uh, it's an important uh, challenge. There are makers and thinkers in our community that already have done that. If this becomes a standard, then uh, it, it it's much, um, it's better for everyone. Yeah. Probably uh, next year there will be another conference uh, and you will probably be here as well uh, again. So um, what should be the topic or what should we talk about next year? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's an interesting, interesting question. So for sure I would like to, to have those products successful so that we can show success and, and basically showing how people are using our technology for solving real problems. Uh, for you know, for for, for for the society, so that that is that is the biggest thing, for sure. Um, uh, we will have more innovation coming, uh, projects that we are working on right now for the next uh, for the next twelve months. Uh, so probably we will be announcing some um, some products in one of the LoRa conferences. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. On our YouTube channel, there's many more videos and interviews uh, with people at the Things Conference. Watch them all.